front page drama, The Death Circle, is based on another exciting adventure of H. Ashton Wolf, whose memoirs are now appearing in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Front page dramas are produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. Four men stand in front of an antique bed of beautiful design and workmanship. They are H. Ashton Wolf, Dr. Bettillon, Inspector Rousseau, and the Spanish nobleman, Don Esteban de la Tanida, the Spaniard that points to the bed. This is where it happened, Signore. What a funny-looking bed. What beautiful workmanship. Have you seen anything like it, Doctor? No, it's most, most unusual. Valuable, too. It may be valuable, but it would give me the horrors to have to sleep in it. Oh, come now, Russo. Just because Senor de la son was murdered in this bed, you don't have to get morbid. That's right, Russo. Just look at that painted canopy. If that isn't a guardian angel up there with the wings spread out. I don't know what it is. This bed is very old. It belongs to my great-great-grandfather. There is another just like it in my room. Hmm. I see. You needn't tap it, Senor Ashton Wolf. There are no hollow spaces anywhere. Uh, Russo. Yes, sir. You may go outside. See the answer, sir. Yes, sir. No, Senor de la Penita. Suppose you tell us just what happened here. Very well, Senor. Last week, my son returned from a trip I had given him as a reward for passing his university examination. Oh, if he had only stayed away a while longer. Well, you have our deepest sympathy, Senor. Gracias, Senor. Most uh, You were uh, saying, Senor. Si, si. I was saying my son returned from his trip, bringing some friends with him. He was telling them of the legend of the ghostly monk who haunts this tower up here in the castle. And he made a wager he would spend a night up here and face the spirit monk himself. Have you seen this ghost yourself? Si, senor. Twice. And each time it has appeared to me as a forerunner of death. When did you see it first, senor? I saw this sinister cow figure on the night my dear wife died. It was standing on the stairs and pointing to her room. As I approached, it vanished into this haunted tower we're in now. And when was your second glimpse of it? The evening I had the telegram announcing my son's return from abroad. Well, this tower has a reputation as a place of violent death, hasn't it? See, si. four men and three women have been killed here, according to legend. My son was the seventh victim. Now, senor... Your son came up here to brave the ghostly monk. What did you do? I went to bed in my own room, as usual. Did you fall asleep at once? Yes. Si. But I don't know whether it was because I drank more wine than usual or because I was tired. Go on, senor. What happened then? Sometime after midnight, I awoke, shivering, my heart contracted by a wild fear, and a strange high-pitched cry still ringing in my head. What did you do, senor? Sitting up in bed... I strained my ears for a repetition of the terrible sound. I was still dazed and heavy with sleep, and so couldn't gain entire control of my faculties immediately. You always sleep so soundly? No. I am afflicted with insomnia as a rule. I myself was surprised I should have slept so heavily. Quite so, senor. Don't you think it's strange also that you should have fallen into such a deep sleep on the very night your boy was murdered? Murdered? Can you think? Yes, senor. Unless your son died of fear... He was murdered. He could not have died from fear, senor. My boy was too brave. Besides, how can you explain the red wealth around his throat? Mm, we shall see. Can you describe the bruise more in detail, senor? I can do better than that. Here is a photograph I had taken before he was dead. Here you are. Mm, thank you. Hmm, this is queer. What's queer, doctor? Well, look here, Ashton Moore. Instead of an even continuous line, it appears to be composed of a series of oval bruises. Almost as though a necklace had been twisted tightly about his throat. Yeah, so it does. I saw the attention of the police to the peculiar shape of the mask, but they had no explanation for them. Have you, Senor Papillon? Mm, not yet. Uh, go on with your story, Senor. See, si, si. I awoke, as I said. Then I made my way to this room. As I crossed the courtyard to reach the tower, I noticed there was hardly a breath of air stirring. Across the mountain, I could see the flashes of lightning and hear the rumbling of a gathering storm. You came straight to this room? Yes, si, si. But the door was locked from the inside. We had to break it down. And you found? My poor boy. He was lying across the bed, his head almost touching the floor. Uh, about here. He was dead. 
His eyes were staring horribly. His face was discolored and his mouth open. Strangulation. Uh, Senor, everything in this room is just as it was that night. Exactly, Senor Bastion. This window is closed and locked, Doctor. That is where we found it, Senor. Ah, this is important. You told us your son was an athlete and a sportsman. Si, Senor. Then why should he have slept with that window shut and locked? Madre de Dios. That is true. It begins to look like a plot. Uh, Senor, who would have benefited by the death of your son? Several relatives. I have a brother whom I haven't seen for years. I've made provisions in my will for him. Mm, I see. If he is dead, I suppose his children would receive it here. But what should that have to do with this horrible thing? Surely no one would go as far as that for a small inheritance. Mm, that depends on how badly the inheritance is needed. Now, where is your brother now? I do not know. My lawyers would have to locate him. How long have you had your butler and your housekeeper? Jose and Maria came to me about a year ago. When I returned from a trip, I found my old servant had left suddenly. And these people were here in their places. Well, senor, there doesn't seem to be any cupboards or closets up here for a murderer to hide in. Have you any secret panels in these walls? No, senor. And then the mystery still remains unsolved. The senor de la Pineda. Si, senor. I wish you would circulate the report among your servants that you've decided to destroy the tower. Destroy the tower? What do you mean, Ashton Wolf? I have a plan, Doctor, by which I think we can track the murderer. I shall carry out your instructions, Ashton Wolf. Good. I feel sure we can get at the solution of this mystery in that way. I hope so. Oh, here comes the butler. Looks as though he'd been hurrying. Signore, signore. Yes, Jose, what is it? Come quickly, come gusto rapido. Oh, what's the matter? Go, up on the top of the tower. Russo, Russo. Hello? Hurry, the phantom has appeared again. Let me have it. Uh, lead the way, Jose. Si, si, senor. This way. Right with you, Jose. Out this way, into the garden. Hurry, we mustn't miss it. The ghost is walking around up there. You can see it against the sky. See, look up, signore. Right, Joe. There is a figure up there. And it does look like a cold monk. We'll soon find out. No, no, senor. Do not shoot. Do not kill the ghost. It will be bad luck. Bad luck for the ghost. It disappeared. You must have hit it. No, I didn't. This fellow grabbed my arm just as I fired. Oh, he did, eh? I am very sorry, senor. But I could not let you shoot the spirit. It would have brought bad luck. Well, that ghost can thank your superstition that it escaped Rousseau's bullets. Shall I hop up there and have a look around, doctor? Uh, no, too, so never mind. All right, Jose. You can go in now. I go. Don't look now. I think we're being watched, Doctor. Yes, that's the most. Measure the wall. Look for footprints. Anything to keep them guessing what we're up to. Very well. I'll start over here. And you, Russo, you found the wall. I'll stand here and pretend to make notes. Yes, sir. Found anything, Doctor? No, not yet. How about you, Russo? Nothing here. Well, I guess that settles it. We might as well throw up the case. Now, come over here. Good work, Captain Wolf. I'm sure I saw a figure behind those curtains up there. Your decision was heard, all right. Did you mean that? About quitting the case? Of course not. Now, I'm going to leave here tonight. You see me off. But before I go, I'll write out some fake instructions. You will drop them where they may be found. Trust us for that. Tonight, both of you are to go to the haunted room in the tower. Hold on there. Is that absolutely necessary? Yes. Why? You're not afraid, are you, Russo? Me? No, of course not. I I just wanted to be sure it was absolutely necessary. Now then, go armed, both of you. Under no circumstances become separated. We won't. Don't worry. And one thing more. Avoid all food and drink at dinner. If that's impossible, drink strong coffee afterwards. But you, where shall you be? Don't worry about me. You'll hear from me later. <laughs> Senor, I, 
I didn't see him at dinner, and I haven't seen him since. He wasn't feeling well, as they told me. He tired early. He's in the room just down the hall. Well, I hope he didn't sleep in a fancy bed like the one in here. He won't get much rest. Anyway, I wouldn't. Another hour gone. Hark. What's the matter? Something hurt something. It sounded like a door closing down the hall. You must be imagining things. I didn't know anything. What's all that? Come on. Quickly, open the door, man. I'll try to. There. This there. way. Right down the hall. Here, here, here. Come here, right into the door. Here we are, right here. Look. What? It's Ashton Wolf. What's happened here? Boy, I got to him just in time. He captured the ghost of the tower. Who was it? Come in here and see. The butler. Have you killed him? It's not the butler, and he's not dead. He's only unconscious. He? Look here. Wolf, wig and beard. Why, it's a woman. The housekeeper. Uh, find the butler, Russo. Yes, sir. Never mind her, Bertillon. Help me with saying other lots of needles. Good heavens. They tried to strangle him, too. Yes, and by a diabolically clever scheme. Wait until he comes around, and I'll explain. Now tie that woman up tightly, Bert, Bert Young, before she regains her senses. Right. I have to stun her a little. Mm. Uh, Senor is coming, too. Uh, Good. Uh, Take it easy, Senor. I, I watch this. Your loving nephew uh, tried to kill you as he did your son, Senor. My nephew? Yes, your nephew, Don Felipe, murdered your butler and housekeeper uh, while you were away. And he and his accomplice here took their places. But why? For that inheritance, senor. Oh. I have made investigations and learned that he kept a pretty close watch on you. But how did he kill the boy? There's no way out of the room without discovery. The door and window were locked, remember? He went through the door, all right. There's a hidden panel in this bed. Watch. Ah. Don Philippe hid himself in here. His accomplice wore the beard and wig to impersonate the butler the night of the crime. There's an arrangement here which causes a rod to come out of the trumpet of this angel in the canopy. When the victim felt the touch upon his chest and sat up, this circle of beads, like a lead rosary, dropped over his head. A twist of the machinery in the panel, and the deed was done. Good bed. See, see, this is what happened to me. Well, what are you thinking of? I was hiding in that closet over there. Oh, Madre de Dios, how thankful I am. Where's the butler? Where's Jose? You mean Don Felipe. Well, Rousseau, did you find him? Yes. He won't cause you any more trouble. He killed himself. Oh, Signore. How can I show my gratitude for what you have done? Well, I'd like to ask a favor. It is granted, Signor. What is it? I'd like to have this rosary of lead as a souvenir. The circle of death will look well in our museum. <laughs> Don't miss the concluding details of this newest adventure of H. Ashton Wolf, which will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. This is Wentworth announcing. Your own announcer will now give you further details of the many exciting true life stories and articles appearing in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Mm-hmm.